you want to work in space? Of course you do. However, the platform that makes that possible today, the International Space Station, ISS, is based on aging technology. It can only support human life for limited durations before the effects of space begin to take a serious toll on the body. With interplanetary travel as its ultimate goal, SpaceX has been researching ways to support longer stays in space, solutions that could be integrated directly into its Starship vehicle. One concept stands out above the rest, artificial gravity. Let's break down this idea, explore how it works, and see what it would take to make it a reality. Here is the challenge SpaceX is facing. The company envisions hundreds of starships, transporting thousands of passengers across the solar system. But this ambition comes with serious risks, especially to human health. With our current propulsion systems, a one-way trip to Mars still takes about six months. That is six months in microgravity. And while floating in space may seem fun, it is actually dangerous over time. Unlike today's highly trained astronauts, future space travelers may include a much broader population. People with minimal training, limited medical screening, and little experience in extreme environments. This increases the odds of serious health complications. Thanks to decades of research aboard the International Space Station, ISS, we now understand just how damaging microgravity is to the human body. Prolonged exposure leads to muscle atrophy, bone density loss, weakened immune response, vision problems, and even neurological changes. Returning to Earth after long periods in microgravity can feel like a full-body hangover that lasts for months. In some cases, the damage is permanent. Astronauts currently require up to four hours of exercise per day just to slow down this deterioration. For civilian passengers, Starship would need to include large, reliable gym facilities, capable of supporting round-the-clock use, especially at scale, and it gets more serious. Microgravity-related illnesses could affect a significant portion of passengers. Even veteran astronauts have required emergency treatment for deep vein thrombosis caused by unexpected blood clots. Otherwise, healthy individuals might suffer acute conditions simply due to the shock of weightlessness on their systems. At scale, these space-borne health issues could pose a greater risk to human life than technical failures. This mirrors the early days of terrestrial exploration when disease claimed more lives than shipwrecks. So if humanity truly intends to become a spacefaring civilization, whether to colonize Mars, explore moons, or even live in Earth orbit, we face a clear choice. Either accept the toll on our bodies or develop artificial gravity as a solution. Elon Musk has, of course, thought about this. In a 2024 tweet, he wrote, Starship will have a small spin on the way to Mars. Even a tiny gravity vector is better than none. The idea, like many of Musk's concepts, is inspired in part by science fiction. Starships either generate gravity using advanced technology or by rotating part of the ship to simulate gravity through motion. The scientific principle behind this is known as centrifugal force. When an object is spun around a central point, like a weight on a string being swung in a circle, the object experiences inertia that causes it to pull out Outward. This outward force from the perspective of the object feels like gravity. Although centrifugal force is technically not a real force in the Newtonian sense, it behaves like one in a rotating frame of reference and produces the desired effect. From the perspective of someone inside a spinning structure, this force creates the sensation of being pulled outward, away from the center. It feels like gravity, even though it is actually the result of the object's inertia resisting the change in direction. If you have ever been on an amusement park ride that spins you around inside a cylinder, holding you against the wall while the floor drops away, then you have already experienced this kind of artificial gravity firsthand. The concept of using rotation to simulate gravity dates back over a century. One of the earliest recorded mentions came from Konstantin Tsiolkovsky, 1857 to 1935, one of the founding fathers of rocketry and aeronautics. In 1903, he published a study titled Investigation of Outer Space Rocket Devices, 
where he proposed using rotational force to create artificial gravity in space. Since then, many variations on this idea have been proposed for spacecraft and space habitats. These include the Von Braun wheel, the O'Neill cylinder, and the Stanford torus. More recently, some of these concepts have been seriously considered. NASA's proposed Nautilus X station would use a rotating torus to simulate gravity, and the Gateway Foundation has plans for a commercial space station based on similar principles. So, how exactly Exactly would Starship spin to create artificial gravity? For Starship, one proposed idea is to integrate a system similar to the hub of a wheel. In this concept, the payload bay of a Starship would carry a large truss structure that unfolds and deploys robotically. This truss would act as a central hub positioned between two passenger starships and would connect them during the six-month journey to Mars. Once linked, the two passenger starships would rotate to reorient themselves and then fire their thrusters to initiate spin. This would impart angular momentum to the entire structure, creating a rotating wheel in space. After reaching the desired rotational velocity to simulate Earth-like gravity, about 9.8 meters per second squared, or 1g, the ships would reorient again so their interior living spaces face inward toward the central hub. For the remainder of the journey, the rotation would generate centripetal force, giving passengers the sensation of gravity. Instead of floating, they would feel a constant pull downward toward the outer walls of their ships, allowing for a more Earth-like experience during the long voyage. However, there are some major challenges when it comes to implementing artificial gravity through spacecraft rotation. One of the biggest is size. To spin slowly enough for human comfort while still generating sufficient centrifugal force to simulate gravity, about 1g, like on Earth's surface, the spacecraft needs to be quite large. The basic principle is that the smaller the radius of rotation, the faster the spacecraft must spin to create the same artificial gravity. And faster spin rates come with problems. One such problem is motion sickness. Human tolerance for rotation is limited. Most people can handle about one revolution per minute before experiencing nausea or disorientation. Some studies suggest up to 4 RPM might be tolerable, and there is even research indicating people might be conditioned to function at rates as high as 26 RPM. But in practical terms, slower spin rates are safer and more comfortable, which again points to the need for a large rotating structure. Another consequence of living in a rotating environment is the Coriolis force, an apparent force that affects moving objects in a rotating frame. Imagine two people on a spinning merry-go-round. One is near the edge and the other is closer to the center. Both are spinning at the same angular velocity, but the person on the edge travels a longer path in the same time, meaning their linear speed is higher. If that person suddenly moves toward the center, they are now moving too fast for the smaller circular path, causing their motion to curve. This sideways deflection is the Coriolis effect. It is always perpendicular to the direction of motion, and it vanishes if the object is stationary relative to the rotating frame. So. What does this mean for astronauts? If someone is simply sitting still, not much happens. But once they move, for example, standing up from a chair, they are introducing motion in the rotating frame. As they rise, their center of mass moves inward toward the axis of rotation, and the Coriolis force kicks in, pushing them sideways. The direction of this sideways force depends on how they are oriented. If the chair faces in the same direction as the spacecraft's rotation, the force pushes them forward. If it faces the opposite direction, the force pushes them backward, face sideways, and they will be pushed to the side. Even simple actions, like reaching out a hand or pouring a drink, will feel odd because every Every motion is accompanied by a sideways force. While astronauts might eventually adapt to this, it could become frustrating and fatiguing over time. The solution is to lower the rotation rate to reduce the Coriolis effect. But that comes at the cost of less artificial gravity, unless the radius is increased. So, if you want Earth-like gravity and minimal Coriolis forces, the answer is simple. Build a bigger spacecraft. Fortunately, SpaceX's Starship is already a fairly large one. So yes, spinning Starship to create artificial gravity may come with some downsides. However, 
Considering the serious health risks involved in spending months confined to a small spacecraft on the way to Mars, it's wise to at least explore the idea of artificial gravity, no matter how ambitious it may seem. And it's not just Mars missions that are under consideration. SpaceX has also floated the idea of building an artificial gravity space station using the Starship vehicle itself. The concept involves transforming Starships into a Von Braun wheel, a rotating space station design that uses centrifugal force to simulate gravity. This hypothetical station would take the form of a large spinning wheel where artificial gravity is created along the outer rim. To build such a structure, dozens of starships would be launched and connected in space to form the outer ring of the wheel. It would be supported by the rest of SpaceX's ecosystem, including Super Heavy for heavy lifting, Dragon for crew transport, Starlink for communications, and other systems already developed for cargo handling and operational support. Sounds ambitious, but thanks to the relatively low cost of Starship, such a massive station could actually end up being more affordable than the International Space Station. In many ways, Starship is already well-suited for this role. It's designed to carry large numbers of people on long-duration missions, and it includes the capacity and life support systems to do so. But let's be realistic. Repurposing an interplanetary transport vehicle into a permanent orbital habitat is no small feat. Starship wasn't originally designed to be a space station. Much of its internal volume is occupied by engines, fuel tanks, and other infrastructure meant for transportation, not habitation. Converting these areas into livable or research-friendly spaces would require significant modifications, adding complexity to an already bold project. Then there's the challenge of infrastructure. Traditional space stations like the ISS come equipped with solar panels, external modules, docking ports, and robust systems for power generation, resupply, and scientific operations. In contrast, Starship's sleek, streamlined design currently lacks these features. Adding them would require extensive engineering changes that could potentially compromise its performance as a rocket. If Starship turns out the way SpaceX hopes, it could become a truly versatile vehicle, not only making travel across the solar system possible, but also greatly expanding what humanity can achieve in space. However, as of now, the company still has a long way to go. Many challenges remain, and a number of obstacles must be overcome before that vision becomes reality. If you have watched this far, I truly appreciate your time and interest. I'm glad to know that this video has been helpful to you. We are on our way to reaching our goal of 10,000 subscribers, so feel free to support us by hitting that subscribe button. It really helps a lot. Thank you.